Stanja Belisco here, <clears throat> proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, primarily heard on CW on 20, 17, 15, 12, and 10 meters. Not much on 160 meters yet, in fact, not at all, because I don't have room <clears throat> for an effective 160 meter antenna, but a, a colleague called me uh, or emailed me actually uh, saying that he was moving to Great Falls, Montana and he wanted some advice on 160 meter vertical or inverted L design and he indicated to me that his lot was about 150 feet long. Well I got to thinking you know my lot is just about that size. Here's a sort of a schematic diagram of what my lot looks like. And I suppose his isn't a whole lot different. North, in this case, is more or less to the right. Actually, that's northwest. Uh, my house uh, lot is kitty corner to the compass. But that's uh, not doesn't really matter too much. The northwest end here is quite a lot higher than the southeast end, probably 20 or maybe 30 feet higher. The house sits right about here. There's my deck. <clears throat> Driveway comes down like that. Maybe it's about 150 feet this way and about 50 feet that way. Now suppose that I wanted to create a 160 meter inverted L, and I could. I could, there's no reason why I can't. I accept my own mental block that if I get on 160, I want to do it with style, I want to do it with real pizzazz, and that means I'm going to want to fly a balloon or a kite at a place like the Stargazer Ranch or the Long Wave Ranch. Uh, at, at Long Wave Ranch, I finally did acquire that place. Um, it's just the land. There's an old trailer on there that's not really worth anything significant, but it's got a wide open setting. Nothing to the south and east of it. And I could easily fly a kite or balloon for 160, but those are kind of dangerous antennas, and I'm not going to recommend them without, uh, you know, a good several series of videos on how to do it, because there's, but an inverted L, suppose that I wanted to do that. Here is what I would do. What I would do for an inverted L is on the deck, right about here where the current vertical antenna is, I would attach a structure of some kind and run guy wires down from the middle and perhaps the top of that structure. Three uh, nylon rope guy wires and I would make this out of a PVC pipe or possibly even a wooden mast and I would probably make it about 40 feet high so that this portion over here, this end of the lot over here, I would put maybe a 20-foot mast that maybe I could put a bird feeder on top of it uh, because there are neighbors up here and I don't want to create an eyesore for them, but a bird feeder I can hardly imagine, uh, although I would ask them if that's all right with them, and if this were 20 feet high and this were 40 feet high, then I'd have more or less a level shot here. So I could go up the deck itself. Uh, th this structure would rise 40 feet above the level of the deck. So I would have a 40 foot vertical rise here and this distance here between these is probably somewhere on the order of a hundred feet. So I could put an insulator on the end of a wire, make it about uh, 88 feet long, let's say. 
88 foot horizontal span, 40 foot vertical span. Now what I've got is a quarter wavelength long antenna for 160 meters, which I could directly feed here, uh, and I could put as many radials down as possible. The basic design for an inverted L that is a quarter wavelength long, the basic principle of design is that you feed it with coaxial cable. Here's your coax. You put an extensive system of ground radials down. As many as you can possibly manage, as long as you can possibly make them. Then you create a vertical structure and a horizontal structure whose total overall wavelength or length is a quarter of a wavelength which on 160 meters is approximately 128 feet. You feed that with coax, you put a ground rod here, and you make sure that your only significant ground for this station is here at the feed point. You connect the center conductor of this coaxial cable to this element so it becomes a radiating element. Now the fact that it is bent like this, then the other key here is you make this as high as possible. If it's 40 feet, 88 feet, that's good. If it's 50 feet, 78 feet, that's even better. If it's 30 feet, 98 feet, that's still all right. In all these cases, you've got a quarter of a wavelength of wire here, which in effect is a bent over quarter wavelength vertical. But the fact that this part is horizontal is going to allow you some high angle radiation that you would not get with a vertical. The current distribution here, the maximum RF current would be right at the base, would decrease till you got to this point, and it would continue to decrease, falling to zero at the far end. So you would most of your radiation will take place from the current loop here but you'll also get some here. So that should be a pretty good antenna. Now in my case, the terrain isn't flat. Instead, the terrain rises something like this. There's your mast here. Now if you've got more room, you can make this wire a little bit longer than a quarter of a wavelength. And then you can do either of two things. You can put a capacitor here in series, and it would probably be several hundred picofarads. You would have to find it by experiment. But if you've got a good-sized variable capacitor that can handle high power, high current and voltage levels, uh, you could put it there and take care of the tuning that way. Or, alternatively, and perhaps as a better option, you could put a transmatch here. Now the problem, of course, is that you're going to have that transmatch at the feed point, not at the shack. And if your transmatch is located away from your shack, you're going to have to preset it and find presettings and then remember them, and you're going to have to weatherproof the enclosure for this transmatch because if you don't you're going to wish you had. Uh, you may wish to watch the Tale of Two Antennas sequence chapter 9 where I show you what happened to my active tuning antenna system after some sloppy South Dakota weather. You are going to want to weatherproof that so that that transmatch does not get exposed to moisture and insects and spiders and other things like that, condensation. Temperature changes <clears throat> don't affect uh, something like a transmatch. But 
uh, you can do that and this should work very well but this is not rocket scientist uh, rocket scientist material this is really basically you're always compromising with an antenna like this you're never getting to the optimum point the optimum point that I dream about is what I would call a kite zep or a balloon zep depending upon the wind conditions you would have a quarter wavelength of window line or ladder line that's about it's going to be a little less than 128 feet because of the velocity factor it might be about a hundred feet something along those lines but if I have a transmatch at the shack, it doesn't have to be quite exact, then 256 feet of wire, and here's your delta antenna, a company called Into the Wind. Google on that. You'll find all the kites you could ever wish for. So this would be a good long antenna. I'm not even sure that it would comply with FAA regulations. That's another point. But as I said before, you've got to be very, very, very careful when you fool around with stuff like this. You've got to have a separate tether. You've got to be very aware of the fact that large static voltages can build up on a wire like this even in clear weather. But that's what I want for 160. But anything short of that is a compromise. This is a compromise. So as such, you want to do two things with this. You want to get it up as high and as long as you can, uh, up, to, up to close to a half wavelength. If you can make it this a half wavelength, so much the better, but the transmatch will take care of any imperfections in the length. That's the one thing you got to do is get it up as high as you can. The second thing you've got to do is to minimize the ground loss resistance, R sub L. And the way to do that is to lay down as many radials as you can and make them as long as you can. So basically, the approach to use here is plain old brute force. The harder you try to make it a good antenna, according to your common sense, the better it's likely to work. <clears throat> but of course, Murphy can always get in and mess up stuff like this and make something that should work, not work. And contrary-wise, Murphy is sometimes caught napping and something that should not work does. Good luck! Have fun. Remember, brute force. Don't let your neighbors get mad at you either. Stan Jibalisco, W1GV, Whiskey One Golf Victor, saying 73 and so long.